Hello, Life Group leaders. Just wanted to continue the conversation on how in the world do you create community within your life group? So how do you get your life group where y'all feel close, where y'all enjoy being with one another, where it doesn't feel like a bunch of strangers in a classroom? And so just wanted to start off kind of with some thoughts here. A lot of these are taken from the book Lead Small by Tom Shifshunis and Reggie Joyner. And so first off is learn to live in community. I know that's like, well, how do we do that? How do we learn to live in community? So let me give you some practical tips there. Living in community, as you know, is so much more than just showing up to a thing at a certain time with strangers. It involves getting to know people's names. Um, there's a book called How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. And he talks about how a person's name is the sweetest sound that they'll ever hear. It's uh, the most recognizable sound in any language. It's someone's name. So just by learning a student's name is a great way to start creating community. But also, um, it's really, it comes with spending time with them and, and making sure, even think of it this way, taking your group and coming before service and hanging out with them in the game room and spending time with them. Or after service, hey, you want to play basketball together? Or you want to go, you know, here's this dumb board game that I found, you know. And just doing stuff together and intentionally spending more time with them. Um, so living in community, and it really takes so much more than just what happens in the service. Um, it really takes outside of the service, spending time with them outside of there, inviting them to some things. Um, hey, let's all go watch the new Marvel movie that's coming out. Those are great ways to, to at least begin fostering community. Having a group text message with each other where you're checking in on them. And you're just, hey, how are things? Where you're sending dumb memes to each other. Um, all those kind of things. Those are great ways to begin living in community. Number two, set priorities. Um, I love the way that um, Pastor James does this. He's our life group's pastor here at Westover. He's, uh, he said one, some of his values for, for his family, um, one of them is fun. That they have fun together. And I can't tell you how important fun is to creating a healthy and a safe community. Because when you can laugh with somebody, when you ha begin to have inside jokes with other people, when you just do dumb things and like tears are streaming down your face, like there is nothing that bonds people together like fun. And um, and you know this because you've been on the, the reverse of this, the inverse of this. If you've ever had a teacher that you're afraid of, that you don't like to talk to, like you you don't enjoy them. You don't enjoy their class. You don't enjoy being around them. And it's the same for a life group leader. If you learn to let your guard down, if you learn to have fun with your students and make fun a priority uh, and make safety a priority. We, we've talked about this, how you want your group to be a safe place where anybody can talk about anything and know that it's not just going to get back to their parents immediately, um, that it's not going to get put on on a Twitter or Instagram or whatever, um, but creating a very safe place uh, for your students. So I think those things are super important. Fun is super valuable. Um, I, I was talking to Pastor James and he said like faith is a big one for them. So like They'll, they'll, they'll have these like round table with their family where, hey, how are you doing? Like, how are you doing this week? How are things going? Are you reading your Bible? Are you still loving Jesus? You know, how do you have any doubts, any questions? And just having a, a safe place to process those things. And so as a life group, it would be really great for y'all to get together and decide together what are your priorities going to be? Uh, what are going to be the most valuable things for y'all as a life group that identify who y'all are? And then number three, so live in community, number one. Number two, set priorities. And number three, be real. And this is so big because students can smell a fake and a phony from miles away. They know if you're not being genuine. They know if you're not being honest. And so just quit the charade. Don't pretend like you're perfect. Don't pretend like you know everything there is to know about God and the Bible. I mean, I certainly don't. And... um. So just be honest. And if you don't know something, it's okay to say, I don't know. And if um, and if you're not having a great day, it's even it's even okay um, to be honest about that and not pretend like your life's always perfect all the time. You know, if you're having a time where you're connecting with each other, hey, how was your week? Oh, good. Mine wasn't that great, you know, but I'm, I'm just really glad to be here with y'all, uh, you know. And here's what I'm not saying. I'm not saying use your life group time as a therapy session for you for you to process what you're going through. I'm not recommending that. But what I am saying is don't just, don't put on a front. Don't be fake with your students. It's okay if you're having a talk about um, purity or whatever to be like, you know what guys, like 
I wasn't always perfect. I I didn't. This wasn't one of the areas where I felt like a rock star. Um, now you don't have to go into specific detail and and get gory or you know or inappropriate. Um, that that could, that'll be a later training. But I think it's important to still be real, not to be weird, but to be real and to promote that and make create a culture in your life group that says it's okay to be honest. It's okay to be real. It's okay to not be okay all the time. Um, I, I think that's such an important thing to realize. It's okay to not be okay. But at the same time, like, we don't want to stay not okay forever. Like, God has a making great life for us. And, um, and it takes at least starting off with being honest about where you are. So those are three tips that I hope will be a blessing to you as you're learning to lead your life group and lead your life group well. Have a great day.